The founder of Best Buy wants back in, vows to take the company private. Let's talk to Jonathan Marino. He is editor of Reuters PE Hub. Jonathan, Richard Shaw's looking to take the company private. Best Buy shares up 11% today. They're having a great day. If I were Richard Scholz, maybe I would browse around elsewhere and look for another company to buy. However, <laughs> he's all in and he's going to try and take some private equity firms along with him. It seems like some, uh, some really likable candidates would be TPG. They've made a ton of retail plays before and another great one would be Leonard Green. They just raised a $6 billion fund. They've got more than enough to put to use. Okay, I have to ask you though, why would anybody want to partner with him on this? It's, gonna, it, it's a little bit tricky. They're, they're trying to sell goods that you can easily get on places like Amazon. Sure in person and the other thing is you know and now that I can pull out my smartphone in the store we can literally compare price points all over the globe right in their store and if they don't win they don't sell so it's going to be a little bit tough to see exactly how they manage to, to manipulate their market relationships into a winning formula here. Totally stuck between Apple and Amazon as you mentioned not the sheen of Apple but not the prices of Amazon for sure and it seems right. like a lot of times you walk into these stores which are smaller now, try out the products and then get it cheaper on Amazon. Yeah, and, and there are other places to go because now they've you know seen invasion from, from guys like Target and people at Walmart. Okay, and stores, the smaller stores, electronic stores like Radio Shack and H.H. Gregg, getting a bump today on this news. Oh yeah, absolutely. A little 3% boost and as a matter of fact, they might be a lot easier to buy at you know, market caps ranging from 250 to 300 million. Okay, interesting thing. I mean, Schultz was there 36 years or so as the CEO. If he can uh, pull this off and then what happens going forward. Let's talk some Knight Capital, have to, the ongoing story of Knight Capital, $400 million coming in and financing. Yeah, no, at the end of last week, Knight needed a check and a mate, and they actually <laughs> got it. Uh, Our daily pun by Jonathan mm -hmm. Marino. Yeah. Uh, they, they were like besieged by interest from private equity firms, which really shows you exactly how much value there is in being an investment manager. Um, you saw folks, I guess, TPG, KKR, and Silver Lake all stepped up to try and bid on the company. It was Blackstone, though, the part with a batch of strategics who are, I guess, kind of tied to their business lines who wanted to save the company. Okay, shares down today, tumbling, we're down about 17%. Oh, yeah, well, they, they, there's still a lot of room that they could um, have to fail, I guess. I mean, we, we haven't <laughs> even seen things like shareholder lawsuits emerge, and that's certainly a possibility right. for them. That'll come up. They're getting some, some of their business being routed back through E-Trade right. and some others picking up that they lost from the end of last week. Clearly, they're going to make it out of the storm. Yes, they will. Okay, let's move to our hot spot and look at some stocks that are moving. Chesapeake hurt by falling oil and natural gas prices. Their second quarter report due out after the bell. Uh, down about 2% right now. And they've also been hurt by some of the reporting that our Reuters colleagues have done about their embattled CEO, Aubrey McClendon. Sure. It remains to, exceed, to be seen, I, uh, I guess, uh, exactly how well he's going to navigate his way out of this storm. The last time they had to sell some assets, they wound up selling some parts of the company to KKR. If their numbers disappoint and they need to sell a little bit more, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, another private equity firm or just KKR themselves step back in at a time where natural gas prices are really compressed. Okay, and a major shareholder there, Carl Icahn, making some noise, pushing for the debt reduction and capital spending cuts there. Okay, wouldn't be a day if we need to talk about Facebook. Up 5%, but still, nobody's really too impressed, huh? We're kind of calling a bottom, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We have to talk about, anytime we talk about Facebook, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We go to the Zuculator. Let's see. Where are we at, my friends? Ah, he's still, he's still hovering around the $10 billion mark. He's still doing quite well. Um, Facebook yeah. is also kind of doing well enough. The, the, their most recent quarterly earnings report didn't exactly blow, anybody's, blow anybody away. But on the other hand, there was a report that came out Friday that suggested that their ad advertising revenue is due for a pop. Due for a pop. Okay. Now let's move on to LinkedIn because this is the big social media bright spot. Uh, I'm in a lot of darkness in social media. Oh, yeah. They had great earnings when they came out and they're up today. But what's interesting, I think, is that they're not, nobody's really looking to them to really break through on mobile, even though they've been up on mobile. They're not looking to break through on mobile. Right. I was looking at their most uh, recent earnings report, which came out last week, and th there was literally no mention of the word mobile in there. What, what, what was mentioned is that their advertising revenue has been a smaller portion of, um, of what they're making, which isn't to confuse that for the fact that their advertising revenue is also growing. Yeah. However, their ability to act as a hiring service is, is what's really driving 50% of their revenue now. Their, their social media aspect is a little bit more of a front to, to get you in, get you applying, and right. you know, if you're a recruiter, get you spending. That's a big difference, where they're sort of more like Monster, in a sense, yeah. than some of these other social media sites. Or put another way, um, how many people have gotten jobs compared to how many people have lost them with a Facebook post? <laughs> That's an excellent point. I like that. All right, let's go and see what the markets are doing today. Move back to the big board here. Dow we have up about a half percent, NASDAQ up just under a percent there, and S&P 500 just under a half a percent. So we're up. I think still maybe some rallying from Friday's pretty good, you know, good jobs report and a lift from Europe today. 
Banks leading the S&P 500 sector, Citigroup up about 3.5%, Bank of America about 25 Morgan Stanley up about the almost 3% there. Good day for the banks. All right, it's a good Monday, right? It's a great Monday. Okay, Jonathan Marino, editor of Reuters PE Hub. Thanks so much for being here. Don't forget, follow us on Twitter, at Reuters Insider, and check out our YouTube channel. That is Reuters.com slash Reuters TV. I'm Lisa Bernhard, and this is Reuters.